not going to lie. Bit of a dream job, that one, isn't it? It was not a bad day I at the know. office. Well, so yeah. She was like, OK, we're going to get this big team of people. They're going to spend months working and trying to find the most amazing things to put you in front of and yeah. then basically film your reaction. It's like, well, you're not going to turn that down, I are think you? you described it as the, the opposite of an idiot abroad. Yes. Uh, essentially. <laughs> yeah, although, you know, you have to be slightly careful about saying that about yourself. But I think, essentially, if you, what happens if you take somebody who is quite nerdy, frankly, yeah. um, like, always wanting to sort of ask questions, find out a bit more, take them to these extremes extraordinary places and see what happens. South Korea tonight? Yes. Is that right? Yes, it is, yes. What South can Korea? we expect from that? It's a strange place. Have you been? No, nope, never been. Oh, and I, I don't know what I expect, no. really. I, I mean, it was amazing. It was absolutely extraordinary, but, like, completely different to what I was expecting, I think, because, mm. I mean, like everybody else, right, I've listened to K-pop, I've watched mm. K-drama, <laughs> I, like, got the K-beauty, you know... And the Demon Hunters, are you on? Of course, yes. about 17 times, yeah. I have daughters. Um, but I think, like, when you're actually there, it's just, like... It is very different to the UK, and part of the reason is that um, it's this country that's like uh, almost all mountains mm. or cities. There's sort of nothing else in between. So, for instance, they don't have like big playing fields. There's not like big playgrounds that like kind of kids go and run around in. Um, but they do have and have had for a really long time unbelievably fast internet. So their national sport is watching people play computer games. No. Right? It's the e-sport thing. So I got to go to this um, this arena with this, like, ex-pro where, I mean, the, his click rate, right, that's sort of like how quickly you can you click your mouse is the kind of, yeah. the, like, the most sporting thing about it, um, was, like, off the charts. Um, and in this arena with, like, really this sort of, six quite nerdy kids in swivel chairs playing on the computer and then this horde of screaming girls. It was, honestly, it was, it was extraordinary. Really better, extraordinary. I mean, this is, this, is, yeah. this is essentially, isn't it? And this actually, eSports has exploded everywhere. Yeah. But, of course, because they've had the advantage of super-fast internet for a very long time, they're at the forefront of it. Exactly. And actually, one of the big things about this is that it's, it's not just, like, rich kids with kind of really fancy computers who are good at this. Because they've had these internet cafes everywhere, that, mm. that this is where kids hang out, you know, it's like the entire spectrum of Korean society is, like, into this stuff. The guy who I'm with, so these are the kids who are sort of... Uh, who are playing, everyone's sort of watching them on the screens. Um, the guy who I was with is this, this guy here. Uh, he's uh, an ex-pro. He had to retire at, like, 23 because uh, his click speed was too slow. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, honestly, it's wild. It's, it's completely wild. And did you find it engaging? I mean, as, as, is this sort of thing you kind of go that democratizes sport for people who aren't necessarily physically as keen to go and run around a rugby pitch or a hockey pitch or a football pitch? Honestly, I had absolutely no idea what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. into, but I think if you were into the game, like at the same time, you know, I can see how people watch chess sometimes and get really excited about it, you know, or like or watch poker or whatever it might be. I think when you understand the rules of the game, it's the same as watching any competition. I think I can understand why people are really excited. There's mm. maths involved with those as well, though, which must be a draw for you, the strategy, the mathematical yeah. format of it. Yeah, absolutely. Especially that now, actually, I know we're going to com come on to talk about AI in a bit. Yeah. Now, these exact computer games, they have... I mean, the world's best players are now artificial intelligence. Yeah. So there's that crossover there as well. But you also say that maths is involved in everything. It's shaped us in so many ways, ways that you don't even know about. I remember Martin Lewis coming on here and him saying, you can't just say you not good at maths because it, it's involved in all different aspects yeah. of your life. I mean, you're, you're right. And the thing is, is that on the one level, you kind of can pretend that it doesn't exist because it's sort of invisible a lot of yes. the time. Like, yeah. you know, I'm looking around this room, right? Like, everything that you touch here, everything that you see, everything that's been designed, basically, at some point or another will have had, like, some mathematical mm -hmm. element to it. Like, it's absolutely integral to every, every, everything that you touch or mm -hmm. see. Um, yeah, and, like, uh, this, this show is, like, just me, maybe not trying to find maths in, like, unusual places, mm. but more demonstrating how it kind of gives you, I think, this really mm. rich lens to view the world from. Yeah. The Amazing. layers. You exactly. The layers. Exactly. The Inf Infinite Explorer with Hannah Fry starts tonight, 8 o'clock on Nat Geo. Now, you mentioned AI. We've got some mm. AI headlines that we thought we'd get your expert opinion on, Hit if me. we can, because yeah. it's something that we're all dealing with more and more. No. Some of us more engaged yeah. with it than others. Yeah. Uh, the first one was from Friday on the Daily Mail, AI court rulings in 10 years' time. The Justice Minister suggested that court rulings will be led by artificial intelligence and that will become a norm within 10 years. Mm. So it is actually already happening mm. um, and has been for a while, actually. Mm. So not just um, uh, in the States in particular where uh, algorithms and AI are used to decide whether people should be given 
bail. Right. Uh, sometimes to decide how long people's sentences should be. And in the UK, there's like an algorithm that, that assesses somebody before they're put up for parole. Okay. And the thing is, I think my immediate reaction to that is like, that slightly makes me recoil, right? It's like this, you don't really want a kind of cold, faceless, like, machine to get involved in these decisions about... I like human freedom, yes. basically. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, I do also think that it's important to remember that the human, human judges are not very good at making consistent decisions, right? Mm -hmm. There's, like, an unbelievable amount of luck that is involved if you just only have human judges, right? So, so my favourite example is that um, judges tend to be much stricter in towns where the local sports team has lost recently. Right? Really? <laughs> yes. There is so they're in a bad mood, They're in a bad mood and they give stricter responses. Because they lost on the weekend. Yeah. I mean, you take, you take the same case to a different game. judge. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get, like, different decisions. You take the same case to the same judge on a different day, you get a different decision. Like, there's an enormous amount of, like, chance and randomness and luck that is and, involved. Well, that's removed, then, if it's done by yeah. AI, surely. If you do it carefully, because the thing is, is that these algorithms, they have this habit of, like, holding up a mirror to mm. society, and sometimes the reflection isn't always that nice. So there have been really, really serious stories where these algorithms have been have been proven to be to be racist, to be, uh, like, discriminate against different people for, for, for lots of different yeah. reasons. Mm. You have to be incredibly careful. Yes. But I think if you are, there is room to improve what we have, as long as the human stays in charge, I think. OK. The current story on The Morning Show, if you watch The Morning Show, mm. is very similar to exactly mm. what you've just suggested. They try to develop the AI version of all of them and they realise that there is fundamental flaws in it because of that. Phew. Yeah. <laughs> You're OK, <laughs> You're okay. Uh, OK, could we have an AI prime Ooh. minister? A new Japanese political party is set to install an AI leader. I mean... Are they? Are they? <laughs> Are they? Are they? Are they? The well, they've is, said they've done it, no? The thing is, there's a couple of companies that have installed, like, AI CEOs as well. <laughs> and, like, OK, I think that these things that we have at the moment are really amazing in some directions, right? They're really good at analysis. They're really good at, like, taking long chunks of text and distilling it down to, like, the heart of it. But they're really fragile in other ways, right? Mm. They get confused really easily. They make really silly mistakes. But also, the other thing that's worth remembering about AI in general is that, like, it might have read all of the internet, mm. but it doesn't understand what it feels like to, I don't know, like, stand outside on a cold, rainy day. Mm -hmm. It doesn't understand what it's like to, like, drink a glass of water when you're thirsty. Mm. It hasn't lived in the world in a human body. And I think that when it comes to leaders, you need somebody who, like, has that emotional connection to other people, who has, like, empathy and understanding in order to make good decisions for people. And I think that for a long while yet, mm. I think that we're talking about human AI teams as being the best situation rather than getting rid of the human. That yeah. makes this, like, the last one as well interesting because mm. they're saying that we're going to be close to AI than our friends by 2035. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that are using AI now mm. for advice on all Therapy. sorts of things. Therapy. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I, I do also think that, actually, I mean, I think that 2035 is, like, oddly specific in this, mm. uh, in this particular headline, but, but maybe that's just, just me. I, I think this is already happening, actually. I think that people are already finding that you can... You can hear with a chatbot, right? You can have uh, a conversation that is that is always on your side, yeah. a conversation partner who is like on your side, cares about the things that you care about, no matter what depth and detail you want to go into. That is like not arguing with you, not criticizing you. You don't have to show up for it in the same way that it shows up for you. I think we're already seeing this. Yeah. But what I also think is that this is like, it's like the junk food version of human relationships. Right, OK. Like, yes. it might taste like food, but it doesn't mean that it's good for you. Yeah. And I think that, in reality, real human relationships are two-way. You have to show up for other people as yeah. much as they show up for yeah. you. And I think that there is... This does genuinely concern me, this stuff. Right. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Anna, you thank you for joining show. us. Yes. I'd love you. Will you come back and of talk course, to some more? Of course, absolutely. And uh, as we see, the show's on uh, Nat Geo tonight at 8 o'clock. Thank you for visiting uh, our This Morning YouTube channel. We upload new content every day. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And we'll see you in the morning.